The DJI Mavic 3 Thermal, I've got it right here in my hands. It is absolutely at the head of its class. Why? I'm gonna tell you all about it. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, I wanted to talk to you about this, the much awaited Mavic 3 Thermal or the Mavic 3T as people are calling it. This thing really, really is something else. I'm gonna tell you about all the features of this drone, so let's get started. You gotta start out by talking about the form factor of this thing, really. It is very, very small. You can fit it in a backpack, you can fit it in your bag, you can fit it obviously in the case that's provided if you buy this thing. But you can see how, how easy it is to open. It's very quick, very easy. There you go. It is now ready to fly. All you gotta do is power it on. Um, so yeah, form factor of this thing is the best out there. It really is uh, for a drone with this many features and to have it on such a small, small platform. Uh, it really is pretty remarkable that DJI has been able to, to get it into this small form factor. Next up to go along with the form factor is its deployment time. You can get this thing up in the air in under a minute, definitely in under a minute. You can see video here of me actually getting it out of the box, getting it up in the air, timing myself to see exactly how long it took to get up in the air. So this drone is very, very quickly deployable. Get it out of your car, up in the air in less than a minute. That is a very valuable thing. Now we gotta talk about the real bread and butter of this drone and that is the thermal sensor. It's got a 640 by 512 high resolution thermal sensor on it. Now the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, the previous drone in this series, also had a 640 by 512 uh, thermal sensor on it. But for some reason, this one, it's an improved thermal because for some reason it's much more crisp. It just looks better to the eye. You're able to pick things out easier. You're able to see the outlines of people. You're able to see the outlines of structures. Uh, so they really did a great job at upgrading this thermal. Uh, it really is a step above what the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced was. And more importantly, it's on par with the M30T in the Matrice 300 RTK with the H20T. So those thermals across the board are all going to be really, really top notch. Next up, let's talk about the zoom camera. You get a 56 times hybrid zoom on this drone. Now it's digital, so at the farther you go in, like when you get past like 20 times, you're really gonna start to see it break up. It's gonna like pixelate and get blocky on you, that kind of thing as you zoom in, but still a really, really great tool. Uh, if you're doing inspection work and you need to be a long way away from something that you are inspecting, this is a great drone for that. And as far as police and public safety go, the zoom is key for them. They're able to use that zoom for situational awareness, all sorts of things the police can use a zoom lens for. So yeah, the zoom on this, 56 times, you're really gonna be able to get right in there with this zoom. Next up, I wanna talk about the split screen real quick because the split screen is very cool. It gives you thermal on one side and it gives you the regular RGB zoom camera on the other side. The great thing is they zoom together. So you've got that split screen going, you hit zoom, the thermal's gonna zoom, and so is the zoom camera so that they're synced up. So it really is a great tool, especially search and rescue. They are using this a lot. They really like the split screen. So that's another big plus for the Mavic 3T. There's also a wide angle camera on this. Now, if you do any mapping, you're gonna use this wide angle camera to actually capture the images that you wanna capture for mapping. But really that wide angle camera is gonna be used for things like first, just awareness. You've got a wide angle camera before you get into the zoom. Uh, you've got that nice wide angle there. So that's obviously uh, what you would want from a wide angle camera. But you would also use it for the mapping portion of things if you were doing like accident reconstruction. Next up, let's talk about flight time. 45 minutes, that's 45 minutes on a Mavic battery. It used to be, I remember on the original Mavic, you were maybe getting 20, 21, 22 minutes, if that. Uh, now we're getting 45 minutes, just in the real world with wind and everything else going on, probably 36, 38 minutes, but that's still a great flight time. You can get a lot done in 36 or 38 minutes. 
The attachments, right now there are two. There is a loudspeaker, which is very, very loud. We don't have one right now, but I was able to hear it when we were at a conference in Las Vegas. Uh, somebody had one and it's, it's, it's really, really loud, much louder than the previous version. Uh, so that's one of the attachments. One of the other attachments is a little RTK top hat. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but there are more attachments that are gonna come out for this drone in the near future. I know there's like a parachute as well, uh, all sorts of stuff. So keep an eye out for the additional attachments that'll go with this drone. Obviously, that'll also be an additional cost from the base package that you purchase. I talked a minute ago about RTK. Now, RTK stands for Real-Time Kinematics. What does it mean? It means that it's gonna have centimeter level accuracy when it's flying. So it is gonna stay on a straight line exactly where you want it to fly. So if you're doing a map, it's gonna make a really, really accurate map. So RTK, is it's not for everyone. Like most of our police and fire departments do not use RTK because it takes a little bit of time to get it set up. But if you do inspection work, if you're working around high power lines, any place where there might be some electromagnetic interference, that's the kind of place that you wanna use the RTK. Now, now, to make the RTK work, you're going to need one of two things. Number one would be an N-TRIP network. Uh, that's sort of a broadcast RTK that goes through the air wherever you are. You can either pay a subscription for that or some states actually offer a free over-the-air RTK network. So an N-TRIP network is one way to do it. The other way to do it is with the DJI DRTK2 base station. That's something you take around with you. It's on a tripod. You set it up. You connect it to the drone. It connects to satellites, talks to satellites up in space, uh, and then it gives you that RTK, that really accurate flight. So you're gonna get super stable flight and you're gonna get really accurate maps. Now, it should be noted that this drone, the wide angle camera has an electronic shutter on it. So while the drone itself is capable of really, really fast mapping and taking those pictures, I would suggest slowing down your flight when you're mapping with this drone. Otherwise, you're gonna get what's called jello in your shot. You'll see straight lines that sort of tilt like this. Uh, so that's not good when you're making a map. So take that map and move it a little bit slower. You can adjust that in the settings. You don't want it to be going full speed ahead when, when you're taking pictures with this drone uh, just because of that electronic shutter. Now the Mavic 3 Enterprise does not have a rolling shutter. It actually has a mechanical shutter, much better for mapping. All right, let's talk about the flight range. Now in flight range, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the distance it can go away from the remote control. DJI lists it at about nine miles. That's a long, long way. Uh, obviously these drones have great connectivity, uh, but I think in the real world, you're not gonna get that far. There are buildings in the way, there are trees in the way, unless you just have a very, very good line of sight. Uh, you're not gonna be getting nine miles. And as I've said before, you're not allowed to fly that far away from the remote anyway. I mean, maybe a mile that you can maybe see your drone still, I think. Once you get past that, you know, unless you've got a waiver to fly beyond visual line of sight, you don't really need a remote that can go nine miles. So this drone and this remote are able to be nine miles apart from each other. That's a great transmission range. And like I said, more likely a lot less and you can't fly that far anyway. Next up is obstacle avoidance. These drones are packed with obstacle avoidance sensors all the way around them. There are so many of them uh, and they work absolutely great. They're gonna keep you away from things. They're gonna warn you when something is close. There are all sorts of indicators and beeps that are telling you, hey, there's something really, really close to me and I don't like it. I say this in every video pretty much, but you gotta treat the sensors uh, like a seat belt. It's great that the sensors are there, but you really don't ever wanna have to use them. You wanna use your brain and fly smart. Don't fly too close to things. You've got great zoom lenses on all of these drones, so there's really no reason for you to get super close to anything. But this drone, the DJI Mavic 3T, has great sensors all the way around it, and it's gonna keep you from bumping into things. Next up is the RC Pro Enterprise Remote. Great little remote. This one's been updated. It seems brighter. It seems a little bit lighter, but you're gonna find it very familiar if you have had one of the smart controllers in the past for like the Mavic 2. Now you've got this new smart controller and I think they've only improved upon it. And it of course runs DJI Pilot, which they have significantly improved over the past couple of years. Uh, very intuitive, very easy to use. Once you learn how to use it on one drone, you're gonna know how to use it on all their other drones that use DJI Pilot. So DJI Pilot is great. Great, so is their new smart controller. Put those things together and you've got something special. 
All right, let's talk about the cost of the Mavic 3T. If you get the drone with the case, with the battery kit, with the loudspeaker on top of it, you're looking at around $6,200, $6,300 for that kit. If you wanna add RTK, it's gonna get more expensive. I believe the RTK top hat is like $750, somewhere around there. And then the RTK base station is actually around $4,000. So the price really does go up. But if you're, say, a small police department that is looking to add a drone to your fleet or you're looking to just start your own fleet for your police department, this is a great way to go. And you're gonna be able to get it at around $6,200, $6,300. So a great deal. Obviously, there's no spotlight yet, but uh, that's going to come soon and that'll add a little more to the cost if you decide you want a spotlight as well. So I went through a lot of categories here. I'm sure I missed several things. You guys always are very eager to tell me that I've missed things. So please tell me that. I'll do an update video in the future answering the things that you wanted to know. The drone itself, what's my final my final decision on it? Uh, it's a great drone. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance was great. This is a huge improvement upon that drone. Uh, so absolutely, this is something, if you're a small police department, if you're somebody that is wanting to start a business that involves inspections, this would be a great start for you. And at a relatively affordable price. I know $6,200 is not a, a little bit of money uh, to a lot of people, certainly not to me. But to get a thermal camera like this, to get a zoom camera like this all on a tight little form factor six thousand dollars is really not that much we appreciate you guys stopping by we work really hard on these videos so please give us a like and subscribe we hope you'll come back we hope you'll check out more of our videos and we'll see you next time